In our last lesson, we learnt forward rates. If the forward rate is higher than the spot rate, we say there's a forward premium. Since one euro can buy more AUD in the future, we expect the euro to appreciate against AUD and AUD to depreciate against the euro. And if the forward rate is lower, we say there's a forward discount. Since one euro buys less AUD in the future, we expect the euro to depreciate against AUD and AUD to appreciate against the euro. Now, one important question that we promise to address is, what determines the forward premiums or discounts? To answer this, we need to understand the arbitrage relationship between the spot rate, forward rate, and the interest rates in the two countries. Let's say the one-year interest rate for risk-free government debt is 5% in Australia and 3% in the eurozone. Assuming that the spot and the one-year forward rates are the same at 1.552, an arbitrageur can earn riskless profit by taking the following steps. First, he borrows €1,000 for one year at the risk-free rate of 3% and uses it to purchase AUD at the spot rate. He invests the AUD at the risk-free rate of 5% for a year and at the same time he enters into a currency forward to sell AUD at the forward rate of 1.552. After one year, he would have 1,629.6 AUD, including interest. As he has the forward contract, he can sell the AUD at 1.552 rate, which means he exchanges all the AUD for €1,050. He repays his loan with interest and he pockets €20 Euros totally risk-free with zero cash outlay. As we've learned in Level 1, such arbitrage opportunities cannot persist. Arbitrageurs will pursue this opportunity, which is to sell euro to buy AUD, which decreases the AUD per euro spot rate, and selling the AUD forward, which increases the forward exchange rate. This continues until the forward rate is at a no arbitrage level against the spot rate. So here we see that when the forward rate is increased to 1.5821, the net cash flow at the end of the year to the arbitrageur is zero. This level, where there is no more arbitrage opportunity, is the equilibrium level for the forward exchange rate. The no arbitrage relationship between the forward rate, spot rate, and interest rates is as such. As the interest rates are annualized, you should adjust the interest rates by the number of days to maturity. This relationship between the forward price, spot price, and interest rates is known as the covered interest rate parity. For now, we assume that the covered interest rate parity holds. So if we plug in all the figures into this relationship, the equation balances. This means there's no arbitrage opportunity and the forward rate is priced correctly. Let's have some practice. The spot Japanese yen per US dollar rate is 110.86. If the 180-day risk-free rate is 0.2% in Japan and 1.8% in the US, what is the no arbitrage 180 day forward exchange rate for JPY per USD rate? Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. First, I hope you did not make this mistake. Unless otherwise stated, interest rates are quoted in annualized figures. So, to get the 180 day interest rates, we have to divide the annual rate by 2. Plug in the figures and we get a forward rate of 109.98. As the forward rate is at a discount, we expect yen to appreciate and the US dollar to depreciate. Let us summarize what we've learned about covered interest rate parity. For two countries with different currencies, this defines the relationship between the interest rate differentials between the two countries and the forward premium or discount of the exchange rate between them. Covered here means that the relationship is bound by arbitrage. Another way of looking at it is to study investor preference. In the CFA curriculum, one convention is to define the base currency as the investor's domestic currency and the price currency as the foreign currency. So for a German investor, the euro is his domestic currency and the AUD is a foreign currency. So the AUD per euro is his reference exchange rate. So, let's say the AUD interest rate is 5% and euro interest rate is 3%.
The investor would prefer to buy AUD and sell euros if he does not expect any change in the future exchange rate. This brings down the spot rate until there is sufficient difference between the spot rate and the expected change in spot rate over the period that he would be indifferent to investing in either currency. Mathematically, this is the point where the expected change in spot rate is the difference between the interest rates of the foreign and domestic currencies. This is known as uncovered interest rate parity. Uncovered means that this relationship is not bound by arbitrage. Rather, this relationship is based on the assumption of risk neutrality of investors. Let's illustrate risk neutrality using our example. When AUD interest rate is 5% and euro interest rate is 3%, the expected change in the AUD per euro rate is an increase of 2%. This means that euro will appreciate by 2% against the AUD in one year. So even though AUD has a higher return of 5%, a risk-neutral investor will be indifferent to changing euros to AUD as he expects it to depreciate, cancelling out the difference in the yield. So, as you can see, uncovered interest rate parity is also another condition that governs interest rate differentials between two countries and the future exchange rate between their currencies. In this case, it's the expectation of change in exchange rate. In theory, if both covered and uncovered interest rate parity hold, the forward exchange rate will be an unbiased forecast of the future spot exchange rate. This condition is often referred to as forward rate parity. However, note that this relationship is only evident in the long term. As you would have known, spot exchange rates are highly volatile in the short term as there are many other factors that influence short-term exchange rate movements. As a result, we can conclude that forward exchange rates are typically poor predictors of future spot exchange rates in the short run. Over the longer term, uncovered interest rate parity and forward rate parity have more empirical support. And let's pause for another exercise. The spot NZD per CHF rate is 1.6650. The one-year nominal interest rate is 1.1% in New Zealand, and 2.5% in Switzerland. Using uncovered interest rate parity, what is the expected spot NZD per CHF rate in one year? Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. First, we calculate the expected percentage change in the spot rate, which is simply the difference between the interest rates. Make sure that the order is correct, which is the interest rate for the price currency minus that of the base currency. Plug in the figures and we get minus 1.4%. Lower the spot rate by 1.4% and we get an expected rate of 1.6417. So far, we've looked at the relationship between exchange rates and interest rate differentials. Now we turn to examining the relationship between exchange rates and inflation differentials. The basis for this relationship is known as purchasing power parity or PPP. In short, the foundation of PPP is the law of one price, which states that identical goods should have the same price in all locations. For instance, a designer handbag should in theory cost the same in Australia as they do in Germany after adjusting for the exchange rate. Again, the foundation of PPP is the principle of no arbitrage. If there is a significant price difference between the two countries, Arbitrageurs will buy from the cheaper place to sell at the more expensive place until the price differential disappears. In practice, you may have noticed that PPP does not hold for many individual goods or services. However, this may hold true if you consider the aggregate of many goods and services. The absolute version of PPP simply extends the law of one price to the basket of goods and services that are consumed in different countries. Absolute PPP requires only that the law of one price be correct on average, that is, for similar baskets of goods in each country. This implies that the equilibrium exchange rate between two countries is determined entirely by the ratio of their national price levels. However, it may also be unlikely that this relationship holds in the real world, as transaction costs and trade restrictions prevent arbitrage from taking place. But if we assume that the transaction costs and trade restrictions remain constant over time, 
The change in exchange rates can therefore be the relative change in price levels of the two countries. We call this relative PPP. More specifically, the percentage change in exchange rates is the difference in the inflation rate between the foreign country and the domestic country. The ex ante version of PPP is the same as relative PPP, except that it's forward-looking. It exerts that the expected percentage change in exchange rate is the difference in expected inflation rates between the two countries. Because there's no true arbitrage available to force relative PPP to hold, violations of relative PPP in the short run are common. However, because the evidence suggests that the relative form of PPP holds approximately in the long run, it remains a useful method for estimating the relationship between exchange rates and inflation rates. Let's pause again for another exercise. The spot JPY per CNY rate is 15.4706. For the next year, analysts expect China's inflation to be 4.8% and Japan's inflation to be minus 0.5%. Using ex ante relative PPP, what is the expected spot JPY per CNY rate in one year? Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. Firstly, according to the ex ante version of relative PPP, the expected percentage change in spot exchange rate is the expected inflation in the foreign currency minus the expected inflation in the domestic currency. Plug the figures in and we get minus 5.3%. Therefore, we expect the exchange rate to fall by 5.3% to 14.6507. As China has relatively higher inflation rate than Japan, its currency is expected to depreciate against the Japanese yen based on an ex ante PPP. So far, we've examined the relationship between exchange rates and interest rate differentials and between exchange rates and inflation differentials. Now, we'll begin to bring these concepts together by examining the relationship between inflation rate differentials and interest rate differentials. According to what economists call the Fisher effect, the nominal interest rate in a given country is approximately the sum of the real interest rate and the expected inflation rate. If this holds true for both the domestic and foreign country, we would expect the difference between nominal interest rates to be equal to the difference between the real rates, minus the difference between the expected inflation rates of the two countries. Under a condition known as real interest rate parity, Real interest rates are assumed to converge across different markets. This is based on the idea that with free capital flows, funds will move to the country with a higher real rate until real rates between them are equalised. Taking the Fisher relation and real interest rate parity together gives us the international Fisher effect, where the difference in nominal interest rates between two countries should be equal to the difference between their expected inflation rates. Let's attempt one last exercise. For the next year, Japanese economists expect inflation in Japan to be minus 0.5%. Given that the interest rate for JPY is 0.1% and 5.4% for CNY, what is the expected inflation for China based on the international Fisher relation? Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. Let's first bring out the international Fisher effect equation. We have expected inflation in Japan at minus 0.5%, 5.4% interest rate in China, and 0.1% interest rate in Japan. The expected inflation in China is therefore 4.8%. In summary, these are the five international parity relationships that govern the interest rates, inflation rates, and currency exchange spot rates and forward rates between two countries. We've learned that covered interest rate parity holds by arbitrage. If forward rate parity holds, uncovered interest rate parity should also hold. We've also learned that interest rate differentials should mirror inflation differentials if the international Fisher relation holds. If that is true, we can also use inflation differentials to forecast future exchange rates which is the premise of the ex-ante version of PPP. And lastly, 
if the ex-ante version of relative PPP as well as the international fisher relation both hold, uncovered interest rate parity will also hold. As noted earlier, these relationships usually do not hold over the short run, but in the long run, such relationships should hold. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.